Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today's video, as you can probably tell by my sweatshirt and my knife earrings, is all about Halloween and horror and all of my favorite things. I am going to be recommending you 20 books that you should read this Halloween, this fall season. If you like horror, if you like thrillers, if you like spooky things, you're gonna wanna take notes on this one. So let's go ahead and get into the books. Let's just jump right in. Look at me with my quick intro. As you guys probably know, I am a huge fan and lover of horror, classic horror, horror movies, things like that. And I have a lot of these recommendations tailored to horror fans as well, even though not all of these books are straight up horror. But I want to start with a book where you can feel just the love of the lore of horror movies throughout the entire novel, and that is The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. I love Stephen Graham Jones. He is from Texas, which I live here. I love it here. He is also a big, big fan of horror movies. You can just tell with the amount of references to the genre and little nods and winks to classic horror and things like that throughout this book. Basically, in this book, we are following a girl as this string of murders is happening in her town, and she thinks she knows who the final girl will be when all is said and done. So she kind of hyper fixates on this popular girl who she believes will be the last final girl. And we follow her in like a movie screenplay style of writing. It's a really interesting read because half of it kind of feels like a fever dream and it's just like putting you in this state where you don't really know what's going on but you totally understand the vibes and how the book is supposed to make you feel and the other half is like very straightforward writing because it's written as a screenplay so it'll have like the wind rustles through the trees, the camera pans across the river, and you basically follow this string of murders, this slasher, but from the lens of someone who is obsessed with horror and has prepared her entire life for this moment. Also, if you're a fan of slashers, this is kind of my go-to wide slasher recommendation because I think a lot of people will enjoy this one, and that is Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez, another one of my faves. This book is so fast-paced. If you want a book that reads like a horror movie, this is the one for you. This one pulled me out of a slump. I love it. It was the perfect amount of campiness meets gore meets intrigue. The actual villain is so, so interesting, and I'm so excited to keep following our villain in the sequel, which is coming out this October, Halloween Slaughter. I just think this is such a classic story. It follows a group of teen campers as they go out into this place to just drink and have sex. You know, what teens do in horror movies. But once they get out there, they are met with a cannibal killer who has made his home the woods that they're now invading. It is so good, so fast-paced, perfectly gory, just like your favorite horror movie. Now, if you're wanting something a little bit less gory, but with the same pervasive love of horror throughout the novel, I would recommend The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. This is actually one of my favorite YA books that I've ever read. It is so, so well done. It follows a girl who moves to this new area because she's running away from a tragedy in her old home, of course. And when she moves to this new classy prep school, she kind of feels like the odd girl out because all the kids at the school are like super rich and privileged and she's kind of on the fringe of things. But she finds out about a club called the Mary Shelley Club where every kid in the club is horror obsessed and they do these things called fear tests that end up getting a little bit too real as the novel goes on. This book is long, long. It's like 500 pages, but it did not feel that way. I read it in just a matter of a couple days, so it is really easy to get into, and the characters are just so lovable. If you're looking for a slasher that's not too intense, definitely pick this one up. 
Now, on the other side of things, if you're looking for something extremely graphic and gory, you could read, and I really recommend this with a grain of salt because this is for extreme horror lovers only, but you could read The Clown Hunt by Judith Sonnet. This gives such strong Halloween energy just because of the killer clowns. I don't know what else you would want to read that other than Halloween. It's the perfect time. I mean, to be honest, I would read about killer clowns at any point, but... For a wide audience? <laughs> this is the perfect time to read about killer clowns. The clown hunt, like I said, is extreme horror, so just know that. Definitely look up trigger warnings before going in, because this is some of the most intense gore I've ever read. The clown hunt follows this guy who is down on his luck and has finally just turned to the... <laughs> one of the most depressing jobs that exists, dressing up like a clown. The whole story kicks off when the kind of 2016 clown with a knife on the side of the road thing gets turned on its head. And now the people are getting revenge on the clowns. So the clowns aren't killing, the people are hunting down clowns. So our main character gets confused for being one of these evil clowns and has to escape this mob that is really determined on just getting his ass. Also, this prologue is probably the best prologue I've read in any book ever. It is so visual and visceral. It feels like a horror movie. You can see it in your mind. Those visuals are just chef's kiss always coming through with Judith Sonnet's writing. I absolutely love her. Honestly, recommend her entire backlist, but only for a special type of person because again, extreme horror. I'm not gonna get in trouble. Y'all need to look up your trigger warnings. Next up, I wanna recommend something a little bit ghosty. Y'all know I don't love, love paranormal horror. It's really difficult to find something that works for me, but my favorite by far ghosty book is actually a little tiny novella called The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. And this follows a woman who is again, just down on her luck she had to take a job as a psychic and she works in this psychic shop this woman comes in one day looking for a little bit of supernatural aid now of course our main character is not a real psychic she's just trying to make a quick buck so she has no idea the ghosty and horrifying situation she walks into when she tries to make some money off of this unsuspecting woman it is funny it is cutting the language and the writing style is just everything I want. It's perfect. I, I mean, if you're looking for something under 75 pages that will really punch you in the gut and leave a lasting impression, this is it. Now, if you're looking for more of the dark academia college vibes, you're feeling the chill in the air and watching the leaves falling down, I would recommend The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I know this one has very mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people hate it. I am somewhere in the middle, but I definitely love it a lot more than I hate it. It kept me on edge the entire time, and I loved, loved, loved the setting. Basically, we are following the aftermath of a death of a girl at a college, and there's just a lot of sketchy things going on at this college, okay? There's a professor who has this little cult of young women that he calls the maidens. There are creepy porters at the doors. Oh, did I mention this was British? And there's a nosy therapist who just sticks her nose in a little too far and she might get burns. I'm mixing metaphors here. It's fine. Read it. I like it. Next up, I have a few recommendations for horror and thriller books that take place at a carnival setting. I don't know why something about October spooky season just makes me want to go to a carnival, eat some cotton candy, get on a roller coaster, feel the chill in the air, get wrapped up in a boy's flannel, make out on the Ferris wheel. You know what I'm talking about. And I love, love, love the setting of a carnival for a slasher. My favorite easily <laughs> carnival horror slash thriller book is Wonderland by Jennifer Hillier. Y'all know Jennifer Hillier is my queen. I will read and love anything she writes, but this one especially I love. It takes that 
dark underbelly of Disneyland kind of concept and brings it into a thriller novel. There is this theme park called Wonderland and it basically runs the economy of the town that it's in. So all of the missing boys and suspicious circumstances around the park kind of get overlooked by the police because it's literally the town's entire livelihood that rests on the operations of this theme park. Well, a sassy new female deputy comes into town and she's not going to let that fly anymore. She's going to figure out what is happening to these boys that work at the park. It has that signature Jennifer Hillier writing style where there's a little bit of darkness, a little bit of creepiness, a lot of fast pace, and that little twist of romance that just brings the intrigue and sucks you in and makes you want to read even more. I also recently read Tastes Like Candy and I absolutely loved it. This also takes place at a carnival. It is a like senior trip moment for these incoming seniors in high school so it definitely reads very YA but for being YA it has some of the most intense gore that I've read and it's a really fun slasher it is just a fun time okay the killer is really obvious the motive is really dumb but the whole time I just had so much fun it was like reading a horror movie and if that is what you're looking for this is gonna be great and the carnival setting always just makes it pop off a little bit more. All of these girls are just running through the carnival doing this little senior prank moment and uh, killer's hunting them down. So what more could you ask for? It does not have to be that deep, you know what I mean? And the last carnival thriller I have to recommend to you is called Welcome to Smiley Land. And I actually just read this a few days ago on a whim. I was looking for a horror novella that not a lot of people have talked about. And of course, I wanted some LGBTQIA rep in there because that's what I love. And I heard about this one having really great representation. We actually follow a non-binary main character, which is so cool to see in horror. And they and their little group of friends go to this abandoned theme park called Smiley Land and increasingly alarming creepy things start happening and all the kids get picked off one by one by one by one. Again, it is just such a fun time. I had a little bit of issues with the overall plot and structure of the novel, which I will get into in my wrap up, but... If you don't take this one too seriously, it's a really fun time. And I also loved all of the LGBTQIA rep. Not just that main character um, has some type of representation. There's a sapphic relationship. And there's also a gay man little character who has a crush on the quarterback of the football team. Like, very cliche, but like, cute. You know what I mean? So I absolutely love this one for that. Again, just don't look into it that deeply. We don't need to do that. It's horror. It's fun. If you're looking for quick little stories to read throughout the month of October, I recently read the Black Phone story collection by Joe Hill and I absolutely loved it. Some of my favorite horror short stories I've ever read are in this collection. I just think they're so, so creative and they're not all really, really scary. There's a lot of just like haunting imagery and psychological horror in here. If you're looking for a lot of variety in a short story collection, you would love this. And if you want to watch the Black Phone movie, this would be a great one. I read for my top tier patrons the Black Phone short story and then immediately watched the movie and compared them directly. So if you want to see that, as always, the Patreon link is down below. But I had a really fun time doing that, so highly suggest it. And if you're more into poetry collections, I would suggest I Am Not Your Final Girl by Claire C. Holland. I loved this little poetry book. It is all based on final girls from iconic horror movies. And each poem is named after the final girl and kind of tells a little bit about their story, about horror tropes, about what you can kind of take as the meaning from something that's kind of campy and fun on the surface. If you're a girl that likes to read into horror and you like the feminist analysis of the horror genre. I think you would absolutely love this one. I had a really great time with it. Jumping back into slashers and back into extreme horror, I would recommend The Night of the Prowler by John Athan. This is again just a very classic plot. It's set in the 90s with our main character 
working alone. She's working the night shift in a convenience store. It's creepy. She's young. It's not the best scenario, but she's doing what she's got to do in the 90s to save up for college. And while she's working her late shift, she hears on the radio that a crazed killer has escaped the asylum down the road and he is off on a killing spree. So we follow her as she attempts to survive the night and we also follow the killer and we see all of the damage he's doing as he fights to get to our girly in the convenience store. Again, this is extreme horror, so be sure to look up those trigger warnings if you need to. This is so campy and fun. I don't know. Some of the gore in this book was cracking me up. It is so funny. I know it would be maybe offensive to some people. I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> if you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. The scene with the corn in the in the cornfield. It was so funny. I don't know. I loved it. I loved it. It was so fun. I just had a wonderful time reading this slasher with this ominous killer and sympathetic main character. It just feels like the perfect setup. It feels like this, you know? It feels like Laurie Strode and Michael Myers. Like, it's the blueprint. It's exactly what you're wanting around Halloween. So if you're an extreme horror girl, that's for you. And my last slasher wreck, sorry, if you're not a fan of slashers, this is going to be the last one, don't worry, is Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. And this is another YA horror. I know, shocking, but I gotta have stuff in there for everyone. And I don't think this was too, too scary. If you're looking for something to kind of feel the horror vibes but not be scary, be more campy teen movie fun, this is that. This group of teens in this southern town is just fed up with the conservative adults and they're just like, Ugh, please, I hate this. I hate it here. I want to leave. But these little kids are about to be running for their lives because there is a clown that is hunting them down as they have their little edgy teen party in the cornfield. And the cops that they hate so much are not coming to save them. It is just such a fun time. Again, such a classic slasher if you're looking for that around Halloween time. Now, if you're looking for something that's more cozy, more tame, really not scary at all, just very, very Halloween vibes, my number one recommendation would be Autumn Crow by Cameron Chaney. And this is a kind of short story collection, but they're all really well connected. All of these stories take place in a town called Autumn Crow where it is Halloween every single day. I think this is a perfect one to read on Halloween because it just has all of the vibes. Oh my gosh, the crunchy leaves and the jack-o'-lantern and the trick-or-treating. Oh, it's so good. And there are some really, really well done short stories in there. I can still vividly remember quite a few of them, even though I read this one like a year ago last Halloween. And the author also has a booktube channel, so let's support indie authors on the platform just like y'all better support me when my book comes out all right period if you're looking for a tiny little novella that packs a big punch i would recommend dear laura this is super creepy and has a lot of trigger warnings so if you are not prepared or you have sensitivities definitely don't go into this lightly but i really enjoyed it it was so haunting and creepy and it just made me feel like i needed to take a shower i don't know the nasty horror was really present in this one it's about a girl whose boyfriend is killed and then years and years and years later she is still corresponding with the supposed killer trying to figure out what exactly happened and where her boyfriend's body is or if he's still alive somewhere. And she's been corresponding with this killer in secret. Nobody knows that she's doing it. And we, the audience, the readers, truly don't know if this is the killer or if this is just someone exploiting a grieving teen at the time, but now a full grown woman. So this has been following her her entire life. Obviously it's a novella, it's really short, so I don't wanna give away too much, but she's finally gonna figure out the truth in Dear Laura. Ooh, here's a classic, classic October recommendation. Y'all know I had to put a little bit of Stephen King in here because 
that's the basic okay that's what people are going to be looking for my favorite king is pet cemetery i think it is so well done especially on audio the audiobook is narrated by michael c hall aka dexter and it is just so haunting he acts out all of the things so well in the book as he's reading it aloud oh, i love it and of course, the story of Pet Cemetery is so, so haunting and so original, hence why it is such a classic in the genre. It follows a little family as they move to a new house right on the highway where a lot of cars drive by really fast and kill a lot of pets. So there's a pet cemetery behind their house, but there's something creepy about some of the places where things are buried. They don't stay buried for long. And I'll just leave you with that. All right, if you're just a basic horror girl and that's like enough wrecks for you, you can go ahead and go. You can exit this video. Thanks for watching. But if you're a little bit more unique, if you like weird horror, if you want something that's not so basic, a little bit indie, a little bit underground, the last four recommendations are for you. I personally love weird horror, but these four aren't books that I would recommend super widely, but if you know you like weird horror like me, definitely stay tuned. My first wreck in this little section is Pearl by Josh Mallerman, and this one is so funny and campy, but still super effective horror. It's about a pig named Pearl, and we do follow her perspective. And Miss Pearl knows how to mind control people. Yeah. Miss Pearl can get into people's minds and be like, Hey, you know what? I feel like you should kill someone. <laughs> so Pearl, the mastermind, either kills people or manipulates people into killing other people. And it's just this like farm vibe. If Animal Farm was a slasher book, it is so weird. But if there was going to be a killer pig book that worked well, this is it. And me personally, I love Josh Mallerman's writing style. I love pretty much everything I've read from him. So something about this just really worked for me, even though it's a little bit of an offbeat concept. My next rec is for the girlies who like a little bit of dark romance in their horror. That would be Go Down Hard. I just recently read this one literally a few days ago. And it is about two serial killers, a male serial killer that kills women and a female serial killer that hunts down shitty men. And coincidentally, they move in next door to each other. They find out about each other's proclivities and there's a weird tension in the air where we don't know if they're about to fall in love and do the things that they want to do and become this little serial killer duo with like this crazy sexual tension or if they're gonna end up killing each other it keeps you on edge the whole time this whole book feels like edging <laughs> sorry you have no idea what's happening but it is so entertaining and there's two different profiles of killers with two different mo's and it's just very very interesting if you are a serial killer pov type of reader you're gonna love this it is campy it is fun but then there is impact at the end as well the next weird recommendation i have is the murders of molly southborn by tade thompson and this is a series that I will be continuing this Halloween. I read the first one uh, quite a few months ago and absolutely loved it. It's a little bit of a weird kind of sci-fi-ish concept where Molly, this little girl, every time she bleeds, another Molly forms. Okay, just let that sink in. Think of how many times you bleed a week. A few times you might you know bite your tongue while you're trying to eat get a cut while you're gardening have a blister on your foot yeah every time you bleed an evil clone of you that is trying to kill you is spawned that's molly's life and things get increasingly complicated as she grows up and tries to have a relationship as she you know gets her period and she increasingly is dealing with more and more and more mollies 
I love Molly as a main character. This novella is super, super character driven and I just loved Molly's character. So it was such a fun time for me. I cannot wait to continue the series. It is just such an original concept. I, I just love it, but it's definitely weird and I can see why people wouldn't like it, but those are just not my type of people. And my final recommendation, probably my favorite ever weird horror book, is One Bloody Thing After Another by Jomi Kameo. Kameo, Kameo. I don't know how to say this man's name, but Joey, listen, you wrote one of my favorite books ever, so thank you. This book is just so weird. I don't know how to explain the plot. It's basically a hundred pages of queer, weird, bloody stuff. <laughs> we follow a lot of people in this little town. This girl who is slowly finding out that she is in love with her best friend, she who is a girl, she is discovering her sexuality. We're also following the best friend who is dealing with her mother who is gradually developing a taste for flesh. We follow an old man and his little dog who are kind of like curmudgeon -y, little fun quirky characters. And we also follow some bloody events that take place in this town. That's the best way I can describe it. It is so wacky and weird, but it is hilarious and dark and funny and meaningful. Like it's just all the things that I would want all wrapped up into one. This book is perfect and amazing and I never hear anyone talk about it. So please God, read it. Read it, find this book and read it. I'm so glad that I read it on a whim, even though I knew nothing about it when I went in. It, that's the way to do it. It is just so, so good. If you're a weird horror lover, gosh, you're gonna be obsessed with this just like I am. So that is gonna be it for me. Those are my 20 Halloween book recommendations. I hope you guys got a couple good recs to add to your October TBR from this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you in my next one. Bye!